This episode of Film Rights brought to you by Shutterstock.com. Welcome to another Film Right Mondays with the exact same jacket I had last week on. Today we're answering questions, of course. We have another Ain't That Some Gear segment and a short film suggestion of the week. Of course, let's do this. Any tips on putting together a good demo reel that will stand out? Well, first you have to have good work. So if you have good work, so let's assume you have some solid work. There's a lot of things that you shouldn't do. One, don't start with a logo or your name or anything like that of any kind. Get right into your work. Another thing that I really like when people send me reels is that at the bottom, say if you're doing visual effects, that it'll show what visual effects you did at the bottom because when it comes to visual effects, it's not usually a one-man show. If it is, put on the bottom that you did everything. If it's not, put on what you did, compositing, color correction, keying, roto, whatever it is, because uh, otherwise I don't know what you did in that shot and it's not really helpful, it'll turn me off to it. Also, don't make it that long. You know, two minutes is a, a long demo reel for me. Put your best work, put it in there, ta-da, done, move the freak on. Then put all your contact info in the description of that video. You can put it at the end, that's fine. Don't put it up front. Let me see your work first, see if I care, then put it at the end. Uh, beyond that, you know, whatever suits you. Try to make it suit your personality. Don't try to be like everybody else. Get a, uh, a song that suits your work and that suits your personality, and I think you'll have something solid. Do you or any of your Film Ride guys play an actual musical instrument in life that's real? Uh, yeah, me, Eris, and Jot. Well, Bruno, you play too, don't you? I dabble. We all play. I, I used to be in a band. I play piano, guitar, drums. I think that's it. Josh, exact same thing. And Eris plays uh, the guitar very freaking well. Eris used to be in a band called Hey Monday, which is, did their name go on? Actually, Cassidy Pope was the lead singer of Hey Monday, who just won that TV show. What's the show called? Um, the Voice? The Voice, yeah. Yeah, she's a girl that just won that. He used to be, and he toured with, I don't remember, some big name band. I'm, I'm starting to feel old right now. Those whippersnappers and the loud music. <laughs> yeah, me, Josh, and Eris all play. I played for about 18 years, Josh for about 12, Eris for somewhere around the same age. Which is funny, because there's a lot of people saying, it's clearly Josh has never played a guitar before, <laughs> but Josh is like wicked good at the guitar. So that was very funny to read. So yes, there's the answer to your question. When shooting films, is Foley typically planned, scripted ahead of time, or is it mostly improvised in post-production? Mostly Foley is a post-production thing. Foley artists will get the film and then they'll take it to their Foley stage and they'll do their work. But also within a script, uh, you actually capitalize sounds that matter. So if there's a certain scene, say it's a scary scene, there's this certain type of whipping sound that I want off to the side, I will write, we hear loud whipping. <laughs> to, to the uh, screenwriter, whatever it says. And whipping will be capitalized. This is for the sound recorders to read, and they know that they're gonna have to get this sound in a very specific sound because they also know that this certain scene takes place within a cave. Okay, so it's a whipping sound within a cave. So they know the exact sort of sound that they're gonna need so they can actually start recording things uh, ahead of time. So it's a little bit of both, mostly post-production though. What advice do you give new editors? I think the problem most new editors have is pacing, which that's something that comes with time of doing and then watching and then doing and then watching and then doing and then watching. But most of the time, new editors will take something that could be exciting and it becomes boring because they're not cutting things fast enough. They get a little precious with it. They want the moment to play out when it should have cut like 10 seconds earlier. And I mean, you'll find as an editor that sometimes the difference of 10 frames or five frames before the cut is massive. Like it's the difference between the cut feeling awkward and the cut being seamless. It's, it's crazy, it's something that you work with. Another thing, actually one of the biggest things that I wish somebody would have told me when I started editing is how massively important audio is to your edit. And when you first edit something, if you haven't edited the audio along with it, you'll watch it back and you'll think you just edited the worst scene in history. But that's once you go and you edit all the audio and you make it match up and you make all the transitions happen and you add in the music, then you find that, hey, this scene's actually pretty good. So usually I'll edit with music if music is going to be in the scene and I'll edit my audio uh, to match as I go. That way when I watch it back, I actually see what I have because audio is such a huge part of your editing. Shutterstock.com is the place to go when looking for stock video clips for film projects, presentations, or websites. Clips come in a variety of formats and most are available in HD. You can sign up for large video packs, monthly subscriptions, or just grab a single video based on need. Shutterstock.com makes it easy to curate your own galleries to make searching 
much easier. Videos are offered in a variety of formats, so you can find web optimized versions, but you won't get nickel and dimed for the high res stuff either. Need an image instead of video, illustration, vector? Shutterstock has you covered with millions of options for you to choose from. So head to shutterstock.com or install their iPad app to get started. No credit card needed. When you find the images you want, use the offer code FILMRIOT1 to get 30% off your package. And that, my friends, is what's up. Hey, senor, what type of tripod do you use? Gracias. Hmm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take that question, I'm gonna wrap it up in a ball, and I'm gonna turn it into a... We have a couple of tripods. Uh, one's from Kessler, which we call the tank because it's huge. We put our heavy cranes and stuff, and we get a really heavy rig. That's what we use, because that bad boy is no joke. But then we have two Manfrotto's, which is the Manfrotto 504 HD head with the 546B sticks. You can get this package for, I think it's about 650 bucks, right? I think about around there, yeah. I think, I think that's around where it's, it was more expensive when I got it but uh, the price has gone down. It's a great tripod. I mean, I'm not married. I have two Manfrotto's because I really like Manfrotto, mostly because of the plates and everything just goes yeah. together. It's cohesive. But I'm not married to any one brand. Bogans are great. Vintons are great. Pretty much any pro tripod you get is going to be really, really great for you. Fluid heads are awesome for, you know, smooth pan and tilt. But you can go anywhere from 200 bucks to 750 bucks. Depending on, uh, you know, what level you're at, you're going to get something good for you. <laughs> So that's it for today, which of course means it's time for my short film suggestion of the week. This one is an animation called Mac and Cheese, which was done by four students as I think their final project uh, from the Netherlands. And they did this in I think two months. A lot of sleepless nights, they said. It's very entertaining. It's about a two minute piece and I liked it a lot. I love the animation. I love the sense of humor behind it. I mean, there is a, one drug part, so there's that. I mean, pre-warning but I mean it's that just check it out it's really good check it out right here once again on Vimeo they have a lot of good short films if you just like roll around Vimeo for a while you're gonna come across some really fantastic stuff not many <laughs> videos of cats on that, yeah. on that platform so check that out and I'll see you guys next week